kind of delay as he works out exactly how he's going to explain uh, what many are seeing as a foreign policy blunder uh, and the decision to withdraw troops from the uh, from Afghanistan. Let's join my colleague Christian Fenders to take you through. This is BBC News. In the next few minutes, President Biden will be speaking for the first time since the Taliban took control of Kabul amid widespread criticism of his handling of the US withdrawal from Afghanistan. At the airport in Kabul today, surely the defining image of the US withdrawal, hundreds of Afghans charging the runway, some desperately clinging on to a departing plane. Boris Johnson has called a virtual meeting of the G7 leaders to respond to the Taliban's takeover, while the UK's Defence Secretary admits that some of those they'd like to evacuate will be left behind. And in Haiti, the rescue operations continue as almost 1,300 people are now known to have died in Saturday's earthquake. They're now bracing for Tropical Storm Grace. Good evening. The White House rejects any notion that the U.S. exit from Afghanistan should in any way compare to the capitulation in Saigon in 1975. But how should the world view the images we've seen today from Kabul airport? Amid the scramble to evacuate Western diplomatic staff, and with Taliban now surrounding the airfield, there was chaos on the runway as Afghans clung desperately to one of the few military transporters that left. Not quite the last plane out, but surely the enduring image of this chaotic American withdrawal. We've heard nothing from Joe Biden since Saturday, but he's just about to appear at the White House. Let's take you there to hear his first comments. Good afternoon. I want to speak today to the unfolding situation in Afghanistan, the developments that have